Hi, it's Mike with AskTractorMike.com. It's raining again in the Ozarks. We've had the wettest May on record. And uh, today I'm going to talk about what can happen to your tractor bad when it rains like this. Uh, the grass is growing here really well. It's tall and rank and nasty. I have not begun to brush hog yet. And when I get out there with the tractor and the brush hog, it's going to work everything pretty hard. It's okay to work your diesel engine. Diesel engines are built, they, they need to be worked once in a while. But if you have a hydrostatic drive like I have, it's going to be really rough on that, out, out there in that rank grass trying to knock it down. So I'm going to talk about three things today to help that hydrostatic drive tractor, the transmission, last longer. A lot of people don't like hydros for brush hogging. I like it because you can easily go back and forth and it's comfortable. It's great. It's easy and it's simple. My wife can use it. The kids can use it. But hydros don't like heat. And in conditions like this, when this dries up and I'm out brush hogging that tall stuff, they can get really hot and it can cause an early failure. So I'm talking about three topics today kind of related. Number one, a technique when you're operating a hydro, how to keep the oil in it cool. Number two, a modification I've made on my tractor that might work on your tractor to keep that hydrostatic oil cooler cleaner, which will keep the oil cooler and make the transmission last longer. And number three, if you've got a shift on the go transmission like this one has, and there's a lot of tractors out there that have a, a, a power high low that you can shift with a button on the go and it quit working, happened to a viewer of mine and me at the same time and we got it fixed consulting a local mechanic who I really admire. So let's talk about those three to topics today. First thing today, if you have a hydrostatic drive tractor, a lot of times I hear people that will, will get on them and you can hear that whine. They put it in a high gear and, and, they, and they push down on that hydro and they're just barely pushing down and you hear that you hear that you hear that that oil in there and, there and there's just not enough circulation and it's it's really working everything and if you want your hydro to last longer you want to be in the lowest gear you can be in with that pedal as far down as you can can safely go versus having it in a high gear and just barely having that pedal down but that pedal moves oil and you want to move as much oil as you can through the system so you keep it cool. If you're not moving much oil, the hydros tend to overheat. If you've got that pedal down, there's more oil going through and it will stay cooler. So remember when you're out brush hogging, you want to be in a low gear with that pedal down as far as you can safely have it. If you're just a little ways down, shift down a range. The second thing I'm going to talk about today is a modification I made on my TC40 tractor. On a lot of tractors, there is a hydrostatic oil cooler in front of the radiator. And on, on a lot of tractors I've seen, they're too close together to get anything down in between them to clean. And you want to keep both the radiator of your tractor and the hydrostatic oil cooler completely clean of debris, and it's tough to do. When a tractor's driving through tall weeds and, it, and the weeds have seeds on them, it's got a big fan that's sucking air back to try to keep everything cool, and it's sucking those weeds right into the radiator and the hydro oil cooler. Well, on my tractor, that hydrostatic oil cooler was right in front of the radiator. There was enough room there for me to get any kind of a wand down to blow air or water between the two. And so I was constantly blowing out my radiator, and I like to blow everything from the back forward right into the hydrostatic oil cooler and that thing was nasty all the time. When I started to do this video I looked and there was a bunch of debris in between the radiator and the hydro oil cooler and you don't want that. That'll, that'll make everything heat up. So the modification I'm going to do today, I'm going to move my hydrostatic oil cooler out. What I did, I went to Ace Hardware. We got a little Ace Hardware store that I just love and I got bolts that were an inch longer and then inch long spacers. And I moved that hydrostatic oil cooler out one inch, and that made a world of difference in space in between the hydro oil cooler and the radiator. Well, now I can get my radiator genie down in between either with, with air or with water and blow that 
uh, hydrostatic oil cooler out, get the debris out of it, and get the debris out of my radiator, and I think there's less chance of it sticking the debris in between the two. So I moved that out. Cost less than 15 bucks, didn't take any time at all to put those longer bolts on. I did have to move the battery forward just a little bit to get that done, but that wasn't any big deal. I'd like to give a shout out today to my sponsor WD-40 and this product, WD-40 Specialist Industrial Strength Cleaner and Degreaser. I keep a bottle of this on my workbench and I use it all the time. Not aerosol and it's really safe. It's biodegradable. It's even safe for use in food processing facilities. So it's a nice uh, non-abrasive product. You can use it on the paint of your tractor. If I'm getting ready to do a work in an area, I'll spray it down with this and then wipe it off so you get all that dirt and grime out of the way when you're turning bolts and wrenches and everything else and it keeps the area clean. Now quick handy tip with this today, if the exhaust on your tractor comes out in the front, you may have a front rim that's always covered with diesel scum. Now the tier 4 tractors you won't, but the older tractors like this one you will. And so just spray a little bit of this WD-40 industrial strength cleaner and degreaser on, let it set for 10 seconds, I mean it doesn't take very long at all, and then wipe it off with a clean rag and it makes that front rim look great again. It's the best thing I've found and, and the safest thing for getting that scum, that diesel exhaust scum off your rims. WD-40 Industrial Strength Cleaner and Degreaser needs to be on your workbench. Now the last thing I'm going to tell you about today, I had a problem with my two-speed shift-on-the-go hydro. I have a hydrostatic drive with a power shift is what they call it. You hit a button and you jump up in speed in the same hydro range. So I've got a two range hydro with a two speed shift on the go. So I've actually got four speeds in a hydrostatic drive. And like I was telling you earlier, I want to be in the lowest gear possible and, and, and with that pedal down as far as I can. Well, it quit working a few weeks ago. And about the same time, I got a, a, a letter from a viewer that had the same problem. He says, how do we fix this? Well, I thought it was a switch and he did too and we were getting ready to start replacing switches. And I contacted a mechanic a technician, one of the best technicians I've ever met at the dealership I used to work at, and told him what was going on. And he said, check your wires on the side of your transmission. Well, sure enough, I had a wire loose, a wire that had been yanked out by brush. And, and so did my viewer. Hoot is the guy's name. He's one of the most gifted technicians I've ever met. Diagnosed both of our tractor's problems and we got them fixed and didn't cost us anything. Might have been yanked off by a, a branch and I, did, I put it back in and tested it and it runs great. Bottom line is, if your tractor won't start or you have a function on your tractor that won't happen because uh, it just all of a sudden quit and you've been brush hogging it, the first thing you want to look for is a, a wire off. But anytime you've got an electrical situation where something is not doing what it's supposed to, most of the time it's a tractor won't start, but if you have a, a situation where a hydro won't shift, that's the first place you want to look and you'll usually find a loose wire and it's fairly obvious how to plug it back in. I plugged it back in and it worked like a charm. I survive on web traffic and I appreciate you watching my videos. If you'd like to subscribe to my YouTube channel, I'd be honored. Click the mic face icon and check the bell so you're notified when I post future videos. If you'd like to look at cool items for the tractor enthusiasts, go to my website here to the Tractor Fun Store. And here's a video I did with Hoot, the mechanic I was talking about earlier, about what's inside a hydraulic cylinder. If you wonder about that, watch this. Thanks for watching.